I think a good place to start would be uh, maybe if you explain your culinary background and how you started. Okay. I, well, I got started at a young age. I was about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm from originally from Detroit, Michigan. Okay. And I got started in a, a local restaurant and uh, basically doing all the, the easy stuff, putting me on the fryers, grilling burgers, um, doing all your basic culinary skills. And then when I was about 18 years old, I moved up to Mackinac Island. No kidding. Um, which is northern, no, between the peninsulas of oh, Michigan. Absolutely. And uh, I worked at a really nice restaurant called the Iroquois Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, it's a French restaurant, French American restaurant. Yeah. And that's where I first met my first real chefs or true chefs. And they all went to culinary school, um, to the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, these were guys I really aspired to be like when I grew up. And I worked there for three summers. Um, and at the same time, I went to college. And after I graduated from college, which was Central Michigan University, I went out to uh, New York, Hyde Park, New York, mm -hmm. and uh, got a degree from, this, from the Culinary Institute of America in mm -hmm. uh, culinary arts. Congratulations. And, uh, thanks, thanks. It's always good to do that. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Still congratulations. Yeah. This was about 11, 11 years ago, close to 11 years ago. No kidding. How does the time fly? I, it flies Incre quick. Increasingly quick. Yeah, really, really quick. Uh, so one of the unique characteristics of your pizzas specifically is people really enjoy your sauces, which is interesting to me because sauces are so often in pizza sort of a tertiary thing where mm -hmm. they're really focused on the ingredients as they should. Dough gets a lot of attention, which it should, but I think sometimes people just sauce it up to say, I need something to put in between these two things. Or you guys are doing smoked sauces and you've used salsa verde for your sauces. Yeah. How do you feel about that? that well, I think uh, the sauce is basically a way to get moisture on the pizza. Yeah. Uh, the, meat, the, po the, the pizza needs a little bit of moisture, but not too much moisture. Um, like I said before, we use a lot of herbs in it in our sauces. We also do the smoked pizza sauce, mm -hmm. which is we make our pizza sauce and then we put it in a, a smoker. Okay. And we smoke it for about two hours at a really low temperature. And uh, that's nice because it adds that that smokiness to the pizza. Yeah, complexity. Um, we also do a, a goat cheese bechamel, Beautiful. which is, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever made bechamel before, but. I haven't. Basically what you do is you make a roux, which is mm -hmm. flour and butter, and uh, whisk it together, add a little milk, and after that, you, you cook it for about a half an hour so the flour taste cooks out of it, mm -hmm. and then we add like crumbled goat cheese in there. That's awesome. Um, so it, adds, it makes a nice smooth goat cheese flavored sauce. Yeah. Um, we also do a butternut squash mornay, which is a butternut squash puree. Uh, it goes with uh, a little ch cheddar cheese in there mm -hmm. and a little uh, bech bechamel also. Yeah. Um, and that, you know that's a nice, that's an interesting sauce too. Uh, salsa verde we had on a pizza before. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was nice, nice spiciness to it. Um, and that's something I think you see very often at all on <laughs> pizzas. Yeah. It's an entirely different category. It, exactly. It was pretty spicy too. It would knock your socks off. It was. Yeah. But uh, some, some <laughs> not, people are looking for, for that. Feeble. Absolutely. It, yeah. Um, let's talk about maybe beer pairings. Being a brewery and a chef at a brewery, uh, how mm -hmm. often do you have to think of your foods in terms of it being paired with the drinks that you guys are serving? Well, most of our drinks are really bold beers. Mm -hmm. uh, besides a few of our, our lighter beers, we have a Cross of Gold, which is very light. Uh, most of our beers are really hoppy yeah. in, in general. Uh, they're all unfiltered, and they have a lot of a body to it. So most of our food kind of reflects that. It's a little spicier. Um, it really can stand up to the food. Sure. The, the beer can really stand up to the food. Um, and the food, I'm sure vice versa, can stand up to the beer. I'm sure you wouldn't want to necessarily serve something that's going to pale in comparison to all the flavor that's e coming out of the drink. E exactly. Um, a lot of our food has a lot of fat in it, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, fat from bacon fat, whether it's fat from the cheese, and these beers that have a little, they're a little happier, have a little more body, can really stand up to that. Yeah. What do you think your philosophy on pizza is, if you had to think about it? I, I, I would say our philosophy, or my philosophy on pizza is kind of built to build the flavors. Mm -hmm. um, we want to start with uh, a nice crust. Um, I like to use... Uh, 
a really high protein flour with low ash that doesn't burn uh, for the crust, extra virgin olive oil in the crust, so it has a nice uh, flavor. Going up from that, the sauce is really important. Um, keep the sauce fresh with a lot of fresh ingredients. Um, sauce doesn't necessarily have to be a, a pizza sauce uh, with like tomato based. It can be any, anything that you want. The cheese is really important. Get a nice cheese that melts nice. Mm -hmm. um, goat cheese uh, is great. It's one of my favorite ones. Uh, we use uh, low moisture provolone mozzarella blend. We also use fresh mozzarella blend. It has to have like low moisture in it. Yeah. And then going up from there, you can add any ingredients that you want as long as they, they, they work together. Um, in general, we try to keep the pizzas kind of seasonal too. Mm -hmm. um, so when corn is out of season in the fall, we take it off the menu. Yeah. Uh, vice versa, uh, you know, we in the, for the fall we have a nice uh, pizza with Brussels sprouts and and uh, cauliflower and butternut squash, and maybe in the summer or in the spring we'll do one with asparagus. So just keep on a rotating and keep it fresh. Um, keep it interesting for the customers and keep it interesting for the cooks too. At Revolution, we're using the pizza as a vehicle to get other ingredients into your mouth. Yeah. Uh, pizza doesn't have to necessarily be really traditional. It doesn't have to have the, the red sauce, the mozzarella, the pepperoni. That's nice. You know, a lot of people yeah. do it. A lot of people love it. You know, it's their favorite pizza. Yeah. But we try to take it to the next level, add different sauces, add different ingredients on top. Add a lot of fresh herbs. We like to finish almost all our, our pizzas with fresh herbs. So our, our pizzas are basically a step a step up, a, you know, and, and the evolution of pizza. You can think of where pizza started from yeah. and where it's going to. And we're just kind of evolving. Um, and, and that's all cuisine in general. I mean, you look at oh, sure. what, what's, what's going on in Spain and El Boli and all these experimental chefs. It, it, it's fun to experiment. It's fun to... Uh, challenge your customers to try different things and when somebody comes in and they see a pizza on your menu with brussels sprouts and butternut squash and fresh herbs and a gastrique they're like wow that's that's pretty interesting that's that's what we're going for we want to kind of surprise people a little bit yeah and, and it seems like a good vehicle i've heard a lot of chefs describe pizzas as an edible plate and for it being mm -hmm. a good presentation piece. So the rest of it, it, you know, you have a world of opportunity to try and expand, try some new stuff while still sort of staying in a structure. It, exactly. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly down there experimenting with between the kitchen. Not everything else goes to the table. Yeah. And you know, we make some pizzas and we're like, ooh, that really didn't work. <laughs> um, and that does happen, but that's part of the experimental process is yeah. to uh, keep trying things and... You know, make them for yourself, make them for the kitchen, and then we make them for the staff. And then if the staff likes them, then we'll put them on the menu for a special. Yeah. If it sells for the special, then it makes it to the menu. A lot of people have rightly complimented you guys for your brilliant sausage. Um, mm -hmm. How is it to try and make a memorable meat in such a, a meat discriminating town as Chicago, where people are really picky about like a good sausage or a good, you know, portion of beef that's going to be going on their food well uh as far as sausage goes sa sausage is almost like baking it's all uh, it's it's uh it's, it's like baking you follow a formula yeah. sausage making is the same way you almost follow, follow a formula and everything has to be weighed out um take careful notes and adjust the sausage afterwards or during um so we have a lot of recipes we follow for our sausage making um Basically, we make all our sausage for a pizza. We do a uh, house-made Italian sausage. Uh, we do a uh, uh, we had a chorizo on a pizza, um, and then we do like a charcuterie plate with our own sausages. And uh, it, it, it's good for us when we buy these whole pigs. We have a lot of trim left over from various parts, and uh, with the trim, we can make a lot of sausage out of it. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and, and generally, probably make about a hundred to two hundred pounds of sausage a week. No way. Yeah, close to that. That's, that seems like a lot of sausage. It is a lot of sausage to make. <laughs> Trying to put like a, some yeah, contextual yeah. pieces of it in my head. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of meat. Uh, so maybe our last question would be, uh, where do you think Revolution Brewing is going? Where do you hope it's going? Things for the future. We're obviously in your beautiful second floor space, mm -hmm. recently, somewhat recently opened. Uh, where, where do you see Revolution Brewing and yourself going from here? Well, I just hope to keep up the creativity. That's the most important thing is just to be creative in our menu. Um, I have a good staff who really helps me with that. You know, we are all coming up with specials. Um, eventually, maybe 
people are talking about a food truck. I'm not sure if we're going to do that. Uh, people are talking about doing more catering. So that may be in uh, the near future. Uh, we got to see what the city is going to do with this this food food laws on the, on the food trucks are kind of opened it up, right? Um, I mean, I think uh, inventive people like yourself are just waiting for the city to yeah. say, you know what, you guys are good. Let's, it, it, let's it's kind of expand. Yeah, it's kind of hard for us because they don't let you cook anything on the food truck, so right. it's almost works against the chef in that in that sense. Yeah. Um, but just keep on doing what we're doing. Just concentrate on the food quality, putting out great beer, great food. Uh, have a fun place for people to come in the neighborhood and, and have a drink and have something great to eat. Absolutely. Yeah. Jason, thank you so much for joining okay. us. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. Just well.